what can be done to drive domestic demand? So what can be done to drive domestic demand? Yes, um, I feel what should be done is um, trying to they should set up some um, stabilization funds, intervention fund to ta some targeted um, sectors of the economy. Um, yeah, with uh, a lot of talk have been done around the agricultural sector, but there's other way we feel the economy, how you can drive uh, demand. Once they are able to produce, like the manufacturing sector, you identify like the, um, the textile, in, um, textile industry, when you also look at the value chain, most of the goods that are being produced, even in the agricultural sector, are not being processed. So if they are able to develop um, the, the processing of some of these agricultural products, then that would try and increase uh, the kind of the revenue, uh, the revenue government, uh, the revenue that will be earned from that, and also serve like, as an import substitution, which they to reduce the demand for the dollar. Yeah. But you, what you also want to look at them, um, trying to see how can government diversify its revenue. Seventy percent from oil. Can we continue? To, is this sustainable? No. It will always be exposed to external shock. Tax revenue. When you look at um, Ghana, about um, seventy-three percent of its total revenue is derived from tax. When you also look at Kenya, about eighty-eight percent of its total revenue. Uh, of its total revenue is derived from tax. So why don't we see how we can increase the tax base? A lot of the activity, the informal uh, sector, is not captured in, in, uh, in the tax revenue. If this, they, 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 are, they are able to build a robust, um, a robust tax, uh, tax base, then it will also help increase the revenue that will be generated, which can also be invested in some of these key sectors to drive this key sector. But the sector. Federal Inland Revenue Service has consistently done that. Look, they've been doing no. well in the and past have been doing, yes. yes, have been but doing a lot, well. But a lot, when you a still look at the percentage, it's still around, uh, uh, it's around uh, like 13 or 13% 13 of the total revenue. If some of these countries, uh, African countries, can be successful in that, when you look at Lagos State, what has helped Lagos State drive is IGR, which accounts for 70% of the total IGR generated by um, the total federation. You, it's because of how it's been, uh, how it's, uh, the, its tax revenue base has increased. The system, um, most of the system it has used in driving its tax revenue base. When you look at it in terms of um, the company income, income tax, which is like 30 percent that goes to the federal government, um, you need to. A lot of the informal sectors are not captured, does not pay this tax. They, a lot Better. needs to be done. A lot needs to be done. In terms of VAT, our VAT is still very low, and we have, we have projected that likely before the end of the year, after election, they may increase um, VAT from 5% um, to 10%, though it's going to increase um, the cost of services or cost of activities. But when yeah. you look at it in terms of um, how the revenue, like the federal government have projected that if tax is increased by 5%, it will generate around $614 billion, which when you look at it in terms of um, that is based on the current um, current amount of um, goods and tax derived from the goods and services produced. Mm. So if they are able to capture more, it's, it's really going to help um, increase, diversify the revenue of the economy. Well, Mr. I, I think at, at this point, the federal government should not, and I'm not sure they are, you know, looking at, you know, any uh, tax policy change in mm. terms of Yes, because we don't, we don't expect to see anything right That's now. That's not the issue now. Mm -mm. I had the privilege of uh, being in a meeting with the Honorable Minister of finance and the community minister of the economy, you know, doing the media and uh, the chat with the private sector some um, uh, two or three weeks ago. And she was very clear on that. The policies might be looked at on a medium to long term basis, but in the immediate term, the important thing to government is to administer our tax even more efficiently. I give it to I FIRS, they, are, they have been doing it um, well, and I think they can do better. We're looking at how can we get more people into the tax net, into the system. Like you like said, you the said, informal, informal like sector. Like rightly said, the informal sector, how can we get more data be on the ground to knock on the doors of these companies? Those companies that derive a lot of billions in revenue that don't pay anything as tax. How can we get them into the system? And if we do, you may be surprised the amount of you know, um, additional revenue this country can gather from there. That's what the uh, minister said they are looking at. And again, a lot of attention is now being paid to the pioneer status so many companies enjoy in this country, and they abuse it. People collect pioneer status, they don't pay tax over a long time. Even when it expires, they're still enjoying it, and they're abusing the economy with that uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, tax uh, uh, holiday allowance. That's being looked at. And of course, our big boys who drive, uh, who, you know, who uh, go on private jets, you know, yacht and all of those uh, luxury things, items. They are being looked at now. I just hope they'll be able to implement that quite, you know, um, strictly. And if they do, we'd be amazed 
you know, the amount of revenue we can gather in this economy. And I, I think that's will help. In the immediate term, that's what I see as a solution. You know, very soon we'll start talking about other sectors that can come to our rescue. You find that those ones can high help, but it's not actually in a short-term basis. Agriculture, solid minerals, manufacturing, the power sector and all of that. Okay, but what we need to do now is to get our tax system, you know, uh, you know uh, well. And of course, uh, you know, I, I love what um, the, the economic team are actually doing. You know, when we talk about corruption, people have been uh, very eager to see people being jailed, you know, knocked on the head, a lot of media hype. But what I see this government doing is to very tactfully and gradually close all the loopholes and gaps, you know, in terms of where corruption, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know stem from. So you look at, you know, things like uh, the uh, integrated payroll system. You look at many other ways they have tried to see, like in this uh, uh, revenue generation thing. Now, by February 28, they have announced that the RBA, that's the revenue bank account, will be closed through the e-collection. Government wants to now see, because there have been allegations and counter-allegations about banks that will collect monies, that these uh, tax funds from FIRS, from customs, immigration, and they will not be remitted to government. Or if they are eventually uh, remitted, they are not fully remitted, or the remittance delays, and that affects budget implementation. Hmm. Now they are saying those accounts will be closed effective February 28. And we want to see a situation whereby these funds are moved straight into the through the e-collection method, moving to the government uh, post. These are all ways to curtail corruption in this economy. Okay. Now, IODG, closing words, uh, we're fast spent for time. What are your expectations now going forward, in the short term at least? Yeah, we, we expect that um, CBN should try and see, come up with policies that can help accommodate the informant sector that has um, failed demand within the, uh, within the forex market and also continue to keep an eye on the banks to see some of those banks that... Um, trying to run trip on mm. the dollar. But yes. Okay, closing here now. Talking about, um, my concern is the real sector, you know, what we can do to drive the real sector. And I have about four or five sectors that I think the attention must continue to be, you know, uh, uh, placed Focused on. Focused on. Now, power sector is very critical. And if this government has not been, you know, judged quite fairly, it's because they haven't made as much impact as we would want in the power sector. And I think they, no they have noticed that. You know, in view of the election and all of that, they notice that people are disappointed, not because many things have not been done, but because the one single important thing, the most important single thing which needs to do in this country, we haven't much done. Though a lot of effort has been made, you know, the sector has been fully privatized, a lot of funds have been really, in fact, in the past two weeks, uh, some about 56 billion have been symbolically released to the um, owners of this private asset to enable them, that's in the um, uh, stabilization fund. And agriculture, manufacturing, in fact, it's not something we can discuss at this point because we're rounding off. Oh, Maybe right. another day we can look at all these sectors well, and see definitely. how they can come in now to bridge the gap and help us you know, um, uh, develop our real sector. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Oji Udemizwe, a financial management consultant, for joining us on the program this morning, and Mr. Ayodeji Abo, the Thanks head for investment research at Free Invest. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Harriet. It's been a wonderful time. Well, thank you so much also for watching today's edition of the program. But if you missed out on the program, which actually looked at the latest developments at the Interbank Forex market, you can log on to uh, youtube.com forward slash channels web forward slash videos. And don't forget to drop a comment or contribution or question, as the case may be. Follow at this morning for updates on what's happening in the world of business. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Harriet Agbingi. Bye-bye.